Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is how to accurately measure your pet's food. Now, as pet parents, we feed our pets every single day. We measure out their food often several times a day for several different meals, and most of us have more than one pet, and some of us have pets of different species that all eat different foods. But how accurate is your measurement each time you scoop your pet's food? you might be surprised to learn that your portioning is inaccurate. You could be delivering too many or too few calories to your pet. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the different ways of measuring pet food and which way is the most accurate. First, you're going to need to consider your measuring device. What are you using to scoop your pet's food? Most pet food bags suggest a standard eight ounce measuring cup, but they're not all created equally. I have two different measuring cups that I got from my kitchen here. They are one cup scoops, um, but they are different sizes and shapes and different depths. Here's another scoop that I got from my kitchen, and this one actually has different measurements listed down the side. So those are some options that you can use. Some other pet parents might purchase scoops from pet stores, and I do have two one cup scoops here that are from pet food companies. So they do have little listings down the side of different measurements as well. And here's just another type um, here, and these lines um, are supposed to represent uh, different measurements as well. So these are some pretty standard options, but other pet parents might choose to use some kind of random objects um, to measure their pet's food out. So they're not truly measuring the food. Um, so they might use things like uh, little coffee cans, plastic drink cups, uh, they might scoop the food with their hands, or they might just dip their pet's dish into the kibble. And unfortunately, it's extremely hard to be accurate with any of these methods. Even the standard eight ounce measuring cups, the ones from the kitchen, and the ones from pet food companies can get it wrong. All of these measuring cups are designed to measure liquids, not solids. And kibbles are very irregular and they vary in shape and size. Not every cup of pet food is the same. Each food differs based on brand and type of food, as well as the species and life stage that it was formulated for. Foods are also different based on weight in grams and caloric value. Kibbles can vary in size, shape, and weight, which is why it's super difficult to get an accurate measurement of one cup of food. Scientific studies have even proven that pet owners and veterinary staff are really bad at scooping pet food accurately using just a measuring cup. As if scooping wasn't difficult enough, most pets don't need exactly one cup of food per meal or per day. Cats often need a half a cup or less, while many larger dogs need a lot more. Also, oftentimes when you calculate your pet's caloric need and change that to cups, you can get some pretty weird decimals or fractions, like 0.15 cups or 0.9 cups. And if you choose to round up or down, you could be overfeeding or underfeeding your pet. The biggest consequence, like I just mentioned, of being imprecise when you're measuring out your pet's food is overfeeding or underfeeding. Overfeeding can lead to increased uh, caloric intake, which can lead to weight gain and eventually obesity. And underfeeding, or decreased caloric intake can lead to weight loss and malnutrition. So it's very important to be as precise as possible when you are scooping out your pet's food each day. So weighing your pet's food in grams is going to be the most accurate way that you get the same amount of kibble each time you scoop. Kitchen gram scales like this one can be found online or in grocery stores for around $10. You're going to want to make sure that the scale measures in grams, but some scales, just like this one, you can switch between units. So this one uh, measures in grams, milliliters, fluid ounces, and pounds and ounces. Now, reliable pet food companies understand the importance of measuring our pet's food by weight, so they often list weight on the bag. You might see a statement such as, one standard eight ounce measuring cup holds 100 grams of this food. However, most pet food companies don't do this, so you're going to need to call them if you, need, if you want this information. And if you call them and you still can't find this information, you're definitely gonna wanna avoid the pet food company. For more information about reliable pet food companies, check out How to Pick a Pet Food Part One. 
So now that you've got your kitchen gram scale, the next step is to figure out the amount of kcals your pet needs to eat on a daily basis. And to do this, go to how to calculate your pet's calorie needs. This video walks you through calculating pet, uh, your pet's kcal needs, converting it to grams, and dividing it into meals. Then place the dish on the gram scale, tear it, and pour in the food until you reach the correct amount. It's that simple. No more eyeballing, no more guesstimating. Just weigh the food and feed your pet. Now I wanted to show you the differences between three different dog foods. So Milo is a large breed dog who eats a diet formulated for sensitive skin. His food is 383 kilocalories per cup and it weighs 101 grams per cup. This is one cup of Milo's food by weight. Notice how it doesn't quite reach the brim of this cup, even when I shake it down. And if I were to transfer it to a different cup, it still doesn't reach the brim. So if I were to fill e either of these two cups up to the brim, I would be overfeeding Milo. Now Milo is 55 pounds and requires 1,250 kilocalories per day. By my calculations, this means that he needs three and a quarter cups per day. And since the cup measurement isn't accurate, I probably wouldn't trust that quarter cup measurement either. Therefore, I would just weigh Milo's food and give him 329 grams of food per day. Thea is a large breed dog who eats a regular adult large breed food. Her food is 353 kilocalories per cup and it weighs 100 grams per cup. This is one cup of Thea's food by weight. Now, similarly to Milo's food, it doesn't quite reach the brim of the cup. And when I transfer it to another cup, it looks a little bit different, but once again, you can still fit some more in that cup. Now, again, just like with Milo's food, if I were to fill either of these cups to the brim, I would be overfeeding Thea. So just like with Milo's food, neither of these measuring cups are accurate for weighing her food. Now Thea weighs 75 pounds and requires 1,580 kilocalories per day. This means she needs 4.48 cups per day. Now since 0.48 isn't a fun measurement and I would be overfeeding her if I rounded up to 0.5, I would just rather use grams to weigh her food. And since her food is 100 grams per cup, it would be an easy measurement, and she would need 448 grams of food per day. Now, while Thea and Milo's foods are pretty similar, consider Fawn's food. Fawn is a very active young adult dog who eats a high energy sporting dog food. Her food is 475 kilocalories per cup and it weighs 112 grams per cup. This is one cup of Fawn's food by weight. Notice how Fawn's food is practically overflowing in this cup. And if I transferred it to another cup that is made to measure pet food, I can barely fit all of that kibble in there. And if I were to measure out one cup of each of these cups, if I were to level it out at the brim, I would actually be underfeeding Fawn. Therefore, neither of these cups is accurate for measuring her food. Now Fawn is 20 pounds and is very active, so she requires 600 kilocalories per day. 600 kilocalories measures out to be about one and a quarter cups, but since these cups are so inaccurate, I don't trust the one cup measurement, so I probably wouldn't trust that quarter cup measurement either. Therefore, I'd rather weigh her food, so she gets 140 grams of food per day. So, I wanted to point out the differences in each food's texture, shape, size, caloric density, and weight per cup. It's extremely important to pay attention to all of these factors, especially when your pets eat different foods, or when you change your pet from one food to another. Next, I wanted to show you the differences between three different cat foods. 
Tibbs is an adult cat who eats a therapeutic diet formulated to help prevent plaque and tartar buildup on his teeth. His food is 269 kilocalories per cup and it weighs 77 grams per cup. This is one cup of Tibbs's food by weight. Notice how the food doesn't come up to the brim. Now, this is the same issue that we had with the dog foods in the previous example. And when I transfer Tibbs's food to another cup that is specifically made to measure pet food, a similar thing happens. It doesn't quite come up to the top. Therefore, neither of these cups would be accurate if we used them to measure Tibbs's food. Now Tibbs is 14 pounds and he requires 337 kilocalories per day. This is about a cup and a quarter of food per day, but just like we said last time, even though a quarter cup is an easy measurement, I wouldn't trust it, especially because I can't even trust the full cup measurement on this scoop. Therefore, I would rather weigh Tibbs's food and give him 97 grams per day. Now, Arno is an adult cat with a history of urinary stones. So he eats a therapeutic diet that is formulated to prevent these issues. His food is 275 kilocalories per cup and it weighs 88 grams per cup. This is one cup of Arno's food by weight. Notice how Arno's food practically overflows out of this cup. And if I transfer it to another cup that is specifically made to measure pet food, a similar thing happens. We've got a lot of overflow in one cup and it seems to be almost exactly in this cup. Maybe it doesn't actually fit up to the brim. So if we used this cup, we might be underfeeding Arno. And if we use this cup, we might be overfeeding Arno. Therefore, we shouldn't use either of these cups to measure Arno's food, but we should go by grams instead. Now, Arno is a 10 pound cat and he requires 262 kilocalories per day. This is 0.95 cups, which is not a great measurement. I don't see 0.95 listed on this cup. Therefore, I would just weigh Arno's food and give him 84 grams per day. Now, Ren is an adult ferret who eats a high quality kitten food. Now, I know we haven't talked about ferrets yet, but we will soon. For now, I simply wanted to compare the difference between an adult cat food and a kitten food. Ren's food is a whopping 531 kilocalories per cup, and it weighs 122 grams per cup. Now, as you can see, compared to the adult cat foods, this food is extremely high calorie, and it weighs significantly more per cup. This is one cup of Ren's food by weight. Similarly to Arno's food, it kind of makes a mound on the top of this measuring cup and it overflows out of the brim. And if we switch it to a cup that is made to measure pet food, we see the same thing. It's overflowing out of this cup. So neither of these cups are accurate if we're measuring Ren's food. Now, Ren is a unique case because ferrets don't follow the same calorie equation as dogs and cats. So I actually had to do a little bit of playing around with Ren's um, food measurement until I found one that was right for her. So Ren weighs about 850 grams, which is about 1.9 pounds, and she gets 22 grams of food per day. This is 96 kilocalories per day and would be about 0.18 cups of food. I don't see 0.18 on this cup, um, or this cup, or this cup, so that's why I weigh Ren's food, because if I round it up to the next nicest measurement, which would probably be 0.25 cups or a quarter cup, Ren would be eating a lot more than she needed each day. My goal with the cat foods, same with the dog foods, was to again display the difference between each of these foods in terms of kibble size, shape, texture, um, calorie density and weight per cup. This is especially important for cats because they eat a lot smaller volumes of food per day than do dogs. Therefore, small changes in measurements can go a long way in terms of calories for our cats. 
And if you're measuring out different cat foods, such as kitten foods versus adult cat foods, it's very important to pay attention to the calorie content per cup because it varies widely. So you'd never want to feed an adult cat kitten food because they could become obese very quickly. Similarly, you would never feed a kitten adult cat food because they wouldn't be able to consume enough volume to get the calories that they need. Also, not to mention the fact that adult cats and kittens have uh, different nutrient requirements as well. Thank you so much for watching this how-to video on accurately measuring your pet's food. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Also, comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Also, check out that video's description below where I give you a few links and resources that I use to create this video. And don't forget to check out feedingravendoodles.com where I give you a complete collection of all my articles, videos, and resources for you in one place. Next time, we're going to be talking about how to transition your pet to a new diet. Bye bye, Raven.